down. You may be seated. How's that? <laughs> if you're visiting with us today, I'd ask that you fill out a pew card and uh, let us know how we can be praying for you. We are glad you are here. Happy Mother's Day to all the women out there. So. Um, also, our church yard sale is coming up um, Friday the 20th from 8 a.m. till noon, Saturday from the, the 21st from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. You can start dropping things off um, Monday, May 16th um, from 6 to 8 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. So please know uh, TVs or electronics, gently worn clothing can be donated. Um, also, this year we are celebrating 185th anniversary. I know some of you were there, so um, you can... You can Get a hold of the people that are in charge, Lori Persky, um, Karen Kennedy, and also Mark Bird. And if you would like to share some things, pictures, photographs, they can digitally um, copy them and get them right back to you. So um, if you'd like to be part of that, please just let them know. Just as a reminder, our 8 a.m. service will be moving back to the little church for the summers. It starts Memorial Day weekend, goes through Labor Day weekend. So... The first Sunday will be the, uh, May 29th. Also, Vacation Bible School is from June 6th to the 10th, from 6 to 8.30 in the evenings. Our Vacation Bible School is for, pre, for ages pre-K through eighth, uh, entering 8th grade. Um, registration is open now at saxonburg.org slash VBS. Karen, would you like to come up and make an announcement? So, good. Our women's Bible study started back last week. It meets Tuesdays at 7 p.m., and they're studying 12 women in the Bible. So, Good morning. You'll continue to see me every week right up until June 6th, I think. <laughs> and your pews are the envelopes for the sponsored child offering, a dollar, a few dollars, whatever you'd like to donate would be great to help defray costs. There is no cost to the children to attend, but your donation helps with the expenses. I'm still looking for a teacher assistant someone to do missions, someone to um, help with the t-shirts for the students, and anybody else that would have any interest, please see me after the service um, or contact me through the church email, I guess. Um, I'd be glad to talk to you. We do have a meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock in the bride's room. If you have interest in learning about the program or have ideas to share, we welcome you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Also, our quarterly newsletter went out on Friday. If you did not receive a paper copy and would like one, they are back on the, either the coffee bar or the round table, so please take one with you. Um, I think that's it. I think everything else is in, in your bulletin, so um, don't read it during the sermon. Read it at, when you get home, all right? So, um, for updates. I think that's it. If you are able, would you please stand for the call to worship and join me. Jesus, the good shepherd, calls our name to come and follow him. His voice, speaking our names, draws us to him. We follow without fear, for the shepherd cares for us. Our hearts rejoice. Trust in the good shepherd. Come, let us enter the gate with thanksgiving. Let us go forth confidently with songs of praise. Amen. Amen.
how great is your love Oh yeah Praise the Lord Oh my soul And glory to the King
Patient and loving God, we stand at the gate and peer through. We keep creating our own ways, believing that we know what is in our own best interest, and we ignore the voice of the one shepherd who will guide us to peace and hope. We wander aimlessly and then wonder why we get so lost. Help us stop and listen to the shepherd's voice. Let us place our trust in the shepherd who has never failed us, who loves and guides our lives. Forgive us our stubbornness and stupidity, for we ask this in Christ's name, amen. Please take a moment for a silent personal reflection. And our assurance today, even though we have wandered and have become lost, the shepherd calls to us. We can place our trust in his loving care, for we are the sheep of his pasture, blessed and given hope. Amen. You may be seated. I want to take a moment and thank everybody for their continued support of all our ministries here at Saxonburg Memorial, and I want to pray for our offering this morning. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. <clears throat> Gracious God, you are the good shepherd, and you keep us safe in your word through day and night. Lord, you strip away any enemy if we focus on your righteousness, and you never lead us astray. Help us to remember that you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And your goodness and mercy flows all through our lives. May these gifts with which you have blessed us support ministries that bring others into your heavenly realm. For it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.
like to t if all the kids could come up front with me. Everybody. Why are you all grumpy? You're not grumpy. You're coming up here. Hello, hello. My goodness, we got lots of people today. Lots, lots, lots. Well, I brought some things with me. Is there room for everyone here? Is, this Is it a Bible? Can, <laughs> we can scooch in. Scooch in. Oh. Are we good? Boys, let's come over this way a little bit so you're not so far away. I can see you. Here, we can all sit in front, too. Okay, so I brought some things with me today. So, Bible. a Bible. Can I hold this? Yay. Okay. Hold and a candle. A candle. Oh, hold oh, that. Oh, you got that from. <laughs> Jesus is the light. Okay, just wait, just wait. And what is this? A cotton a ball. ball. A cotton ball. ball. So, I like a Bible, a cotton ball. And the light, a candle. So, Lydia, what did you say? The candle represents Jesus being the light. Okay. I have no clue what this represents. You don't know what the, nope. what, what, what's the Bible? What's it teach us or what's it tell us? God. About God. God's okay, now what about a cotton ball? I have no idea. A sheep. A sheep? <laughs> it, it is about a sheep. But what would a candle, a Bible, and a sheep have to do mm -hmm. with anything? What? Um, Jesus being the holy sh the shepherd. The um, Jesus being the holy shepherd. The and Passover. He's, and he's mm -hmm. like the person. He's, he's so well, old sheep. Everyone in this church is sheep. And Jesus is a shepherd who... He, you're doing good. You're doing good. He leads us the way. He leads us the way through through everything we've ever done, and when and then it, he leads us up to heaven. So Andy just took. She just did the whole sermon for us. So we're good. <laughs> so yeah. So Jesus leads us where he wants us to go. He is our shepherd. Who else do we know that's like a shepherd? Parents. Parents. Okay, and pastors. Okay, we're gonna stick with the parents because what is today? Mother's, Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. So, do you think that we needed moms in our lives? Nothing yes. against the dads, but did you think we needed moms? Yes. Yeah, so, us with none of us, people wouldn't be here. People wouldn't be here. Yeah. So, how are moms like shepherds? Um, they they guide us, like they guide us to um they guide us they guide us to doing the right things okay did you know that there are two kinds of shepherds hmm hmm well there's a one wait there's a human shepherd and then there's one who there's a human there's a shepherd who guides humans and there's a shepherd who guides sheep kind of but th well yeah but that would be a human shepherd too I know. Okay. I know. So, are, so are we all sheep? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and so, and we know that Jesus is everywhere, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so he made moms because we need guidance. And sometimes moms have to walk in front of us and hold our hand and help us to learn. Do you think that's right? Mm -hmm. And then as we get older... They start to maybe be in the middle, and then they walk behind us because we got it, and they can let us lead. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So sometimes we need gentle reminders. Are moms gentle? Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Well, then there are times where, guess what? We need a little bit, our moms to be a little strict at times too, huh? Your mom's not strict, huh? Sometimes. Oh, sometimes. So we know, sometimes we need a little bit of both. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Sometimes we need the warm and cuddly, and other times we need correction and direction. Yes. Yes. And that's correction and direction, and that's where we get the two types of shepherds, ones that lead and ones that follow. What kind of shepherd do you hope to be? A good shepherd. A good shepherd, a yes. A bad shepherd. And what do we all, who do we always want to follow? 
Jesus. Jesus. The good shepherd. The good shepherd, yes. All right. So, so and sometimes we need, and I hope I have enough, we might have to split these. Sometimes we need little reminders. And we've been blessed in so many ways, and sometimes so we have to balls. use, yeah, there's lots of cotton balls. We have to use our smarties to make sure that we are good sheep and oh. that we are following Smarties, our shepherd. What if okay? someone makes a bunch of Smarties that all would? I don't know. I never saw a red Smarty. I like what's oh, Look, all of a sudden, Will's my friend over here yeah. now because I said Smarties. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> all right. So let us pray. Thank you for today and letting us be together and blessing us with mums. And thank you that um, we have that you've blessed us with smarties and that we remember to always follow Jesus and to be his sheep. In the name we pray, amen. We as fathers only get them when they're bad. Come on, I couldn't pass that up, folks. <laughs> I know what my wife's thinking. Don't laugh, it only encourages them. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Take your time, Jen. <laughs> Andy did a good summarization of the sermon. We'll just start, start with the benediction and then we'll be, we'll be done. <laughs> Thanks, Jed. <laughs> Once again, we've come to the part of our worship service where we offer prayers of joy and prayers of concern. I have a lot of people on my list, so get your pencils ready. If you want the list, I can send it to you. So, um, Just a, a thank you for all our mothers out there. Um, Megan, who was, I had recovering from surgery. She is back in surgery today, so please keep her in your prayers. Um, Judy, my sister-in-law, continued treatments. Um, Nate and his family, my cousin's uh, son, um, just continued prayers for him. Rocky is on my list for work. He's looking for uh, a job. Gary Hines was in the hospital. He is back home, so um, please keep him in your prayers. Debbie Edmonds is uh, battling with uh, diverticulitis, so please keep her in your uh, prayers. Jeannie Lefevre, continued recovery. Um, also, Pam is uh, in the hospital. She had a stroke. And also Lois Myers continued recovery at home. So um, if you've got a joy or concern, now's the time to share them. Anybody? Rocky. Yeah, my brother Jim goes in for laser surgery this week to repair a valve that is on the old gun. Okay, for uh, Jim, for uh, a valve replacement, heart valve replacement. This week, Rocky's brother. Oh, re re repair. Okay, anybody else? Arlene. Okay, for Tom, who, who uh, is still struggling and is back in the hospital and trying to keep that leg, so good. Jackie. Okay, for Emily, dealing with seizures, so anybody else? Our country, good one. So, Denise. So for good results. Good results of a biopsy for D. Good, anybody else? Okay. 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we give you thanks today for mothers. We thank you for the mothers who gave birth to us and the women who have treated us like their own children. Lord, you teach us how to be good mothers and protecting our children and raising them. Help us to raise them to be the people that you want them to be. Lord, we need your comfort here today because some are, are missing their mothers and some mothers are missing their children. Some are parted by distance and some are parted by death. So we pray that you would comfort those who have given up their children for adoption or have lost children. Comfort those who long to be biological mothers and could not be. We pray for those whose mothers have disappointed them. And we ask for grace in relationships where there is pain and bitterness. We pray for healing in relationships where there is abuse and violence. And Lord, help our congregation to be a space where people can feel mothered, can feel their gifts and their talents to be nurtured and appreciated. Finally, Lord, we pray today for mothers around the world, mothers who cannot feed their children, mothers who are homeless or without a homeland, and mothers who must teach their children about the dangers of bombs and bullets and bad people. Help us create a world where mothers can raise their children in peace and in plenty. Now, Lord, be with us as we pray for those who were mentioned by name. Lord, we thank you for all mothers. We thank you for the women in our lives. Lord, we pray for Megan as she's in surgery. We pray that the, the doctors and the surgeons would work through your hands. Lord, we continue to pray for Judy and her treatments and Nate and his family. Pray for Rocky and his work situation. And Lord, we give you thanks that Gary Hines is home. Lord, we pray for Debbie and continued healing for her and Jeannie Lefevre and continued recovery for her. Lord, we put Pam into your hands and pray that you would continue to be with her in the hospital. Lord, we pray for Lois Myers and her recovery at home, and we pray for Jim as he goes in for surgery. We pray for Tom, Lord, as he is once again in the hospital. We pray for Emily, and we pray that they would find out what's causing these seizures. We pray for D and good results for her biopsy. And Lord, we do pray for our country, and Lord, we put this country into your hands. Now, Lord, we ask all this in Christ's name, who first taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd ask that you stand for our next hymn, number 231, Jesus Shall Reign.
be seated. Please take out your pew Bibles and follow along with the scripture reading this morning. It's found in John chapter 10, verses 22 through 30, and that is on page number 1040 in your Bibles. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts, walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. God bless the reading of his word. Let's pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Everyone loves a good suspense movie or book. Suspense is a tried and true element in storytelling. Top New York literary agent Noah Lukeman says that as long as a writer can maintain suspense in his or her stories, many readers will continue reading even if the plot is thin and the character development is weak. I believe that this means that there is an, there's an important tool of novelists to tell the story with some suspense in it. Ian Irving an Australian author of 29 novels also says that a good story at least has, at the very least, has a strong figure and an adversary, a hero and an adversary. The tension and suspense der derive from the struggle between the two and the uncertainty of the outcome. The suspense works if we, as the readers, can align ourselves and feel sympathy for the hero, he says. The hero in our story this morning is Jesus, and the, and the hero has adversaries. In this case, some of his own countrymen. While visiting the temple, the Jews gathered around him, and our passage tells us, so there was tension mounting there. Dramatic tension, suspense, and unexpectedly, however, in the text, it is the Jewish leaders who claim to be held in suspense, and they're trying to claim that it's Jesus who put them there. How long will you keep us in suspense, they say to him? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. So this is setting up our passage today. In this case, there was likely in the minds of these adversaries some suspense of mixture of fear and loathing regarding Jesus. Because if we read further in our passage, these guys are encircled Jesus and they start picking up stones to stone him. They're about ready to kill him. But before we go any further, I just want to give you a little background of our passage. The Feast of Dedication is more commonly known in Jewish circles as Hanukkah. This is where they want to do a whole eight-day feast, and they only have enough sanctified oil for one day, and yet it lasts all eight days, which is where, we get the, where they get the menorah. This is an extra-biblical festival. 
And Jesus is there to celebrate, which I find interesting. I believe that Jesus is there celebrating because he's part of the community. But there's tension inside of them, and you can feel that in our text. Again, it says Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews were there, and they gathered around him saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. You have to remember that Jesus already once cleared the temple. So maybe the Jews are kind of watching him with one eye at all times, wondering what he's going to do this time in the temple. So context does matter. Remember that we're celebrating the Feast of Dedication, and that, that celebration is a celebration of the Maccabean Revolt. And I wonder if they're not wondering, subtly at least, if not even communicating it somewhat, this is the kind of Messiah that we want. One like the Maccabees who overthrew their occupiers. It's the feast that's the rededication festival. And it was for the Jews to bring up. It was an opportune time for them to bring up and press Jesus on this issue of his messianic status. Tell us plainly, they say, are you the Messiah? Jesus answers them. I did tell you, but you did not believe. In all fairness, Jesus up until now has not said that he is the Messiah. However, in chapter 8, he did say before Abraham was, I am. He declared himself God. And he did allude to the fact that he is the Messiah a few times when we review the evidence. He has shown himself to be the Christ. He answers them with this kind of cryptic answer again. He says, I've told you, but you don't believe me. And then he goes on to describe exactly what he means. I've told you by doing the things that I've done. He's basically saying, you are the witnesses. You are the testimony to who I am. So he's kind of putting it back on them. If you can't put these things together, it's a fault of your own faith, is what he's saying. This isn't because I'm not clear. If we go back to chapter 3, when Nicodemus says, we know you are from God... Otherwise, you would not be able to do the works that you do. So if Nicodemus gets it, Jesus is saying, how about the rest of you? What's wrong with the rest of you guys? Now, I want to look at verses 26 and 27, and there are, there are a couple tough verses here. They say, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I believe that you have to keep these two verses together. You do not believe because you are not one of my sheep. This means that there are people out there who are not Jesus' sheep. And you can't even change this. When you go back to the original language, when you go back to the Greek, this is exactly what it says. So the next question out of our mouth should be, what does it take to be one of Jesus' sheep? Well, the very next verse tells us, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice. So the key to being a sheep is to hear the voice of the shepherd. And they've been, as he says, unwilling to hear that voice. See, it's not Jesus keeping them out of the sheepfold. It's them keeping themselves out of the flock because they're unwilling to hear his voice. Jesus says, I've told you. I have already spoken to you, and you have refused to listen to me. There's a phrase that goes, 
the church is the sum total of the sheep who hear the shepherd's voice. The church is a sum total of the sheep who hear the shepherd's voice. It's not their great works. It's not our great works. It's not our accomplishments. Even in all the age, even in this age, it's not our accomplishments. It's not our buildings or structures. It's not the systems we've developed. It boils down to the voice of the shepherd. And maybe here in John's context, even more. It's not your expectations confirmed. Even if we look back in the earlier in chapter 10, there's actually a passage of time between the earlier part of this passage, which talks about the good shepherd, and where we are now. Jesus does the whole good shepherd thing, that, but it happens a little bit earlier in time. So there's a passage of time between what happened in this passage, what happened prior to this passage, and what happens in our passage. Jesus is still in the same setting. He's still in Jerusalem. He's still in the, in the temple. So the setting is kind of the same, but it's later on in the fall when the festival takes place. But the history of the festival is important, and it dates back to 150 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. In the previous section, Jesus is talking to his audience and this whole good shepherd idea, this analogy, is also important to be tied into the history of the nation of Israel. Because that's what kings were. Kings were known as shepherds. Shepherds of the people. Kings were there to guide God's people and to take care of them. To lead them along the right path. So there's a connection here with the leadership and with this festival of dedication, the festival of lights, the festival of Hanukkah. Because it remembers a time when the hero rose up and he led the people out of oppression to lead the people again, they're hoping. So it all finally leads to the question that was asked, are you the Messiah, are you the Christ? See, we can interchange those words because they're the same word just in two different languages. Messiah is Hebrew, Christ is Greek. So I think what they're saying is, if you're the Messiah, tell us plainly. So are you, when you take into the setting and remember the time, the one person that they're looking for, the one person that they're hoping leads them out from oppression, is the anointed one, which means Messiah. But what they're looking for is a small M. They're looking for a king. They're looking for a leader, not the Messiah with the capital M, the Savior of the world. Tell us plainly, they say, so that we can rally behind you, so that we can know where you are going. But here's the case it shows us that there's a lack of understanding of what Jesus, the Messiah, with a capital M, intended to be. Because the Messiah that is Jesus, that Messiah, our Messiah, is different from all those other Messiahs, those kings that came before him. With all the history behind, this is where Jesus gets into the shepherd, the analogy of the good shepherd. Now what really captures my attention more than anything is the statement that Jesus makes here. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. When Jesus makes the statement about knowing his sheep, the word knowing is a sense of intimacy, a deep intimacy knowing as in a husband and wife know each other. 
with intimacy within the relationship. It means I know my people. I know them intimately. I know them. I know everything about them. I know how many hairs are on their head, and I know they will follow me. Here is why it captures my attention. It's because the last two words in the Gospel of John, post-resurrection, by Jesus, are the two words, follow me. We talked about this last week when Jesus appears on the seashore and some of the disciples, including Peter, come up and they exchange words with Jesus. Jesus' Jesus's final words to Peter are these two words, follow me. Now, there's got to be some significance there. What does it mean to follow Jesus? Well, it means a lot of things to a lot of different people. It means that we follow his teachings. It means we believe in him. That's the statement, to believe. Believe in what? Well, believe that Jesus and the Father are one. That God became tangible. And we believe that Jesus is God. That we believe that God becomes a man. And God put on flesh and dwelt among us as one of us. We believe that God desires to be with us so much that he became what God should not ever become, a man. And we believe that God, that we have a God in the flesh that will die. And then not only that, but that God in the flesh will show us that death does not ultimately win. What does it mean to follow me? It means to believe that we have a God who's even bigger than death. It means that we have a God who desires to be in relationship with us. That's what our God desires to have with us is a relationship with him. So the suspense is revealed. Jesus and the Father are one. Jesus is the Messiah and the Savior of the world. That's the good news for Mother's Day this year. Amen. And amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we do give you thanks that we can follow you and believe in you and have part in your eternity. Thank you for that, Lord. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'd ask that you stand and join in in our next song, In Christ Alone. We're going to sing of that same Christ, the only one in whom we have hope for salvation, uh, for life eternal. Let's sing this morning. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to 
first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny no power of hell no scheme of man can ever block me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the cloud Richard C. Halverson was the chaplain to the United States Senate for about 15 years, and he closed each session with these words. He said, you go nowhere by accident. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. He has a purpose in your being there. Christ who indwells you has something he wants to do through you where you are. So believe this and go in his grace and love and power. And all God's children said, Amen. And amen. <laughs> 